I wanted to start a new sketchbook, so I thought I would bring you along for the process. I recently bought the Color Cubes by Sarah Renee Clark. I will leave her a link in the description box below. I bought set one and two, which has 500 cards, and I didn't need 500 cards, so I split it with two other friends. So we each got a stack of 166 cards, which is really a lot. That is all of these that you see here. It's a lot of cards. <laughs> but what I like about them is they're small. Look how beautiful they are. I mean, here's my hand, so they fit in the palm of my hand really nicely. There are five or six colors, palette colors, along with an image that she pulled the colors from. I really like them that along with these colors on the back side, you can see she's stepped them out even further into lighter shades and darker shades. So here's the shades on here, here's the tints, and then here's the actual color. These were made for color pencils, so she has a whole directory where she matches any color pencil and you can find it. It's really a beautiful system, but I wanted it to use it for inspiration to get me outside of my palette comfort zone, right? So trying different palettes, trying different colors, and then seeing what I can come up with them. So you, I'm just gonna flip through a couple cards so that you can see how beautiful they are. They each have a number, so 001 to 250 is color cube one, and then 251 to 500 is color cube two. But I just want you to see one is more beautiful than the next. I love this color palette. There are so many possibilities with this. So don't limit yourself to what you're seeing. Think about what you can do with this. Like to me, this just feels like spring awakening with the bright pink and the really bright spring green. A beach scene for sure. <laughs> Think of vintage with this palette. Tropical almost. Love that. Love the softness of this. So what could you do with this? Think about doing a bird or a butterfly or a portrait. This would make great skin tones. You know, think beyond the picture. Although you could take one shell and put all of these colors in there, which would be quite, quite pretty as well. Look at that. I think of Van Gogh whenever I see sunflowers, especially with these bright colors. So it just goes on and on. So if you don't know about these, check them out. And if you have a couple friends you want to share with, the more the merrier. I keep mine in a little bitty box here. It's just like a little tote box, but it fits them perfectly. Let's them lean forward so that I can see them. For this exercise, I will be using a handmade journal. This is four and a half by six and a half. And I found a source on Etsy. She's from Canada. She makes the most beautiful books. So I will share that in the description box below. This one is filled with uh, Fabriano Artistico paper. You can also cho choose arches, I believe. I think there's two or three different kinds of paper you can choose. So I really like that you get high quality choices for her paper. You can see it's not a very big sketchbook, but I'm going to have fun filling the pages. I'm also going to be using my new 24 Studio Palette. You saw me rework this and do the big color chart for it, so I thought it would be nice to kind of learn this and learn some mixes out of it that I'm not normal normally using. And it'll be a way to just test my skills with mixing. And I think any artist, if you can test your mixing skills, it's going to be a win-win for you and for your artwork. So if you want to see the video for this 24 Studio Palette, I will link that in the description box below too. The card that I chose for my first page is this one because it's a palette that I normally don't use. I'm not a huge fan of blue and I really don't like this kind of green. So I thought it would be nice to challenge myself to try something new for the first page. So what I did was I went to the art. <laughs> 
Of course I did. I found a really old nasty leaf. Look how fun that is with all of its holes. I have that drawn right here. I just laid it down and traced it with a mechanical pencil. And then I drew five like one inch by one inch squares going down the side here. See the little squares? And then I have the leaf there. So what I'm going to do is mix the colors first and then we're going to have fun filling in the leaf with whatever color combination I want to try. I usually like three colors. Five is a little much so we'll see what, what happens here. I've got a little tester sheet of paper here. So the first color is this blue. Now I have an indigo. I know that's way too bright. I have a Davies Gray and I have a lavender. So I think I want to try the lavender first. Let's see what lavender is. And then I'm going to mix a little bit of the Titan Buff with it. And you can see this is a pretty light value. So I think I need a little bit more water. Let's see how we did. That's pretty good. <laughs> so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to use that same mixture here. The Fabriano Artistico paper is 100% cotton. I'm not used to working with that. <laughs> So I usually like cheaper paper because so it's really kind of sucking the water right down into it. I'm hoping I can still splash because a color book without splashes would not be mine. <laughs> okay. Now we've got the next color. This one really just looks like Titan Buff. But I want to try mixing, so I want to try a little bit of this, let's see, let me look at Titan Buff by itself, and maybe a little bit of the Naples. You can see it has a little more yellow twinge to it. Let's see what that looks like. That is pretty good right there. And just a little bit more Naples to make it a little brighter. Then back to our swatching. The flat brush I'm using here is a Princeton Snap Brush and a number 10, the flat shader. It is what I used on my, hundred, my first 100 day project because I like the size of this. It's really nice for a flat and it's white bristles, which means they're a little firmer. So I really like the way that that works. I will have all my supplies linked in the video description box. Okay, the next color is this kind of orange yellow or yellow orange. Let's see, I have an orange on my palette and I have a yellow. So let's see what that does first. Here's the orange. We're mixing this one. Let me try a little bit of Naples here. Let's see what happens. Let's check that out. It's a little too bright, so maybe let me try a little more water on my brush. Let's see how that looks. That's pretty good. So I'm going to mix this water with this pile. We're doing good with mixing so far. <laughs> okay, the next color is a duller orange. So if you are wanting to dull a color, if you go directly across the color wheel, so by that I mean if you go red directly across and green, those are called complementary colors and they automatically gray or mute them down. So because this is an orange, a kind of muted orange, let's see what color is directly across. That is blue. So to dull the orange down, we're going to use blue and let's see what happens here. 
got the orange. You can see it's way too bright of an orange. So I've got several blues. I've got an indigo and I've got a Davies Gray. I'm going to try Davies Gray first. Now watch what happens to the color as I add the Davies Gray. You see how it just took the brightness right off of that? Add a little more Davies Gray. It kind of dulled it. So let's see what color that is. It's a little too dark, so I'm going to add a little bit more water. Let's see how we did. That one's pretty good. I also want to try the orange with a little bit of indigo and see what happens. Just a touch of indigo because indigo is harsh or strong, I should say. Okay, let's see what that did. You can see it made it just a little darker than this one still seems a little brighter and I think I'm going to go with that brighter color. So that was the orange and a little bit of Davies and some water. <laughs> I'm seeing that with the more cotton paper, I have to let it dry a little longer before the splashing. If I splash too soon, it just runs. It doesn't really give me the drops that I like. So I'm waiting for the shine to get off of the paper before I splash. Okay, our last color combination here is this green. So let's see, I have the Mother's Joyce, Joyce's Mother color. I have this minty green, and I wanna try the minty green. I just really like this color and I don't use it a lot so let's try it again let's go to color wheel so this is a green here so right across the way is red so if I touch a little bit of red it should dull it so let's see I've got a little bit of the alizarin gold which is a red let's see here what happens to that Did you see how it dulled it right? It's not that intense anymore. Let's have a look at that color. Okay, so Joyce's mother green here. It is more of a dark green, so we're going to have to brighten it up. I want to try brightening with a little bit of this mint and see what happens. That color is more the color. So you saw what the mint did. It just added a little bit of brightness to it. I think we're off to a good start so far. So let's look at our colors next to them. What do you think? I could have gone a little bolder there. Could have gone a little bolder there but I'm really happy with the colors so I need to pick three colors for my leaves and I'm gonna pick this color because I normally don't use a, a blue like that especially like a cold blue like that and I'm gonna pick this I think I'm gonna pick the green as well because it has that mint green in there and I think that playing with that will be kind of fun and then what color am I going to mix with that? Maybe I'll just tone it down with this more um, buff titanium. That way we'll have a warmer green, a cooler blue, and then really like a kind of neutral. And for painting the leaf, because it's such a small leaf, I'm going to be using the Princeton Long Round, the Aqua Elite in the number eight. And this has become one of my favorites. If you took my Artful Advent, this was the brush that I used because of the point. I really just love that point on that brush. So let's make a nice little puddle of the 
Titan Buff and the Lavender. And I have a middle line drawn because I like to work on one side and then work my way around. I need more water. I have a tendency not to use a lot of water whenever I'm watercoloring. I know that sounds weird. It's from my acrylic days. <laughs> Going around the circles that I have here, I like the holes that those leaves presented. Okay, I'm going to mix some of that green, which was Joyce's mother, and the mint. Okay, that looks nice. I need more water because I don't want it really competing with this or taking over this color. Ooh, that's pretty. Look at those two colors, how they're kind of melting together. I like that. Now I'm going to mix that light color, which was the Buff Titanium and Naples Yellow. Water. Look what that's doing. Do you see how it kind of made this in here a little softer and a little murkier? I like that a lot. Pick up some of that lavenderish blue. When I come up against the seam here, I want to leave a little spe space like the stem is there. But see, these are similar colors, so I'm going to kind of blur those together. I like to do that in my leaves. It just gives them a little bit of variation in them. So I'm going to go pick up a little bit of that green color up here. I'm watching the sheen here to make sure that it doesn't dry up. I am going to take a little bit of this to the edge here. I've got to pick up some more of that um, buff and Naples. There we go. I like how yellow that is, so I don't have that much yellow up here. I'm going to blot some yellow. There we go. I'm going to just take some lavender now by itself. I 
and now I'm going to splash. You can see when I splash, I get it quite wet. There we go. Because I want it to kind of run and meld and create new colors. I'm going to, while this is wet, I'm going to brighten that color. I want that a little brighter. Here's how our piece turned out, and I'm really, really pleased with it. I love the color here. I wrote palettes inspired by Color Cube, and then since each of these has a little number, I put the number up here at the top, so it says 223. That way I'll know what card it was that I used, but I'm really thrilled with it, and I'm gonna bring you closer so you can see the details of the leaf. Isn't it beautiful with those three colors kind of playing and mingling? I love the really dark area here and then how it went into the softness of the lavender and the uh, Titan buff. I love the holes. And then here's the palette, number 223. Let's see if I can turn it this way. Maybe you can see them all. There you go. It's a color that I normally wouldn't use, but I really like the way that the colors came together. If this is something you would like to see more of, please let me know in the comments below. I'd really appreciate that. Thanks so much for watching.